Let's rewind to before we were born, when we were just a cluster of cells. Somewhere inside that cluster were special cells called stem cells, which could become any cell in the body – blood, brain, bone, skin, or any other type of cell. Researchers used to think stem cells only occurred during early embryonic development. We now know that stem cells stick around throughout our lives, acting like emergency personnel. When we are injured, are sick, or undergo normal wear and tear, stem cells multiply and transform themselves into the lost or dying cells. How does a stem cell know what kind of cell to become? Substances from and around the damaged cell that need to be replaced bind to surface proteins of incoming stem cells, which tell them what to become. These surface protein receivers are called receptors. For most of us, this process of continual repair is relatively smooth. This is not the case for those with a rare genetic disease called fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, or FOP. Stem and stem-like repair cells in those with FOP misinterpret a protein called activin A as a signal to become bone instead of repair muscle with muscle. The same thing happens with ligaments and cartilage. Instead of becoming ligaments or cartilage, they also become bone. Bone growing in the wrong place is called heterotopic ossification, or HO. Over time, joints that are typically surrounded by flexible ligaments and filled with cartilage become restricted by HO and lock in place. Even the jaw can be affected, limiting one's ability to eat and speak. Bone in the wrong place can also be quite painful. Genes carry out the information that determines the characteristics we inherit from our parents. Traits such as eye color, skin tone, and dimples come from our parents, as do certain genetic diseases like type 1 diabetes or FOP. While FOP can be passed down by a parent with a disease, it is most often the result of a random genetic mistake in an individual sperm or egg for the first time. There is no way of predicting, preventing, or knowing whether this will happen. It's no one's fault. What are the first signs of FOP? First, children born with FOP usually have abnormally formed big toes. Many have stiff necks and backs, making it difficult to crawl and look up, so they quickly learn to scoot on their bottoms to see where they are going. Then painful swellings and bumps begin to develop on their heads, necks, shoulders, and backs. These can appear after a fall, following an injection, after a virus, or for no known reason. Not all cases of FOP are the same. Some people, unfortunately, are affected right away. Others don't develop symptoms for years, or their symptoms are relatively mild, and they don't develop a lot of heterotopic bone. How do doctors make a diagnosis of FOP? Usually, this is done based on observing the child's big toes, and the swellings and bumps in their head, neck, and back. Eventually, this is followed by genetic testing to see if the ACVR1 gene contains one of the mutations known to cause FOP. Sometimes the lumps and bumps seen in FOP are mistaken for cancer. However, it's important that doctors don't biopsy someone with FOP, or the biopsy site will develop HO. FOP is believed to affect only one in a million people. But many scientists and pharmaceutical companies are working hard to learn even more about FOP and to find drugs that help FOP repair cells correct faulty bone-making messages. Researchers are working on medications to treat FOP, including gene therapy, and some of these medications are already in clinical trials. To learn more about FOP, visit the International FOP Association at ifopa.org.